Good morning, John. I'm here to debunk a myth. A myth? that we probably all believe. It's a simple statement that is really hard not to believe knowing what we know. The internet brings out the worst in people. We all know that the anonymity of the internet allows the deep evil inside of every human, except for me, of course, to spew forth in a fountain of vomitous hate. And yeah, I see it even on our content, on our sex episode of Crash Course Psychology. There were comments, thumbed up comments nonetheless, talking about how homosexuality is a disease. And yeah, there are two hosts on SciShow Space. One of them is male and one of them is female. I would like you to guess which one has constant comments about their appearance every time they're in a video. Just go ahead and guess. But you and your friends, you aren't hate mongers. So it must be other people. Those people at the grocery store who seem very nice. But then when they get home, they go on the internet and they shrug off the clothes of their cultural bird and then they put on their costume and they become internet turd. But I want to make a hypothesis here that allows me to feel better about the state of the internet and the state of humanity. I'm thinking anonymity doesn't bring out the worst in people. It just brings out the worst people. Imagine, if you will, a D-bag. This person goes on the internet and he says nasty things to people. He's racist and he's sexist. He doesn't have a lot of friends because he doesn't like people and people also don't like him. On average, he speaks to about 0 .02 human beings in the real world per day. In the physical world, this human is entirely invisible. We have no idea they exist. He doesn't want to express his beliefs in the real world because they are unacceptable. But on the internet, he not only gets to express his views to lots of people, those people then engage with him. It's a kind of exercising of power. He gets to get a rise out of people. It's thrilling. It's not scary like doing it in real life would be. It's a rush. This person isn't like a sweetheart all day long and then goes home and becomes a D-bag. He's a D-bag. The reason you don't run into internet trolls in real life isn't because they're normal people with deep evil inside of them. It's because trolls don't talk to people in real life because nobody likes them. All of this, by the way, this entire episode is conjecture. I'm, I've got no research to back this up, but it would be fairly easy research to do because I think internet trolls would be super excited about filling out surveys that graduate students in psychology gave them because they probably love to talk about themselves. Because it seems pretty likely to me that at least a good portion of them are narcissists. And honestly, I think understanding this and understanding those people is really important because I think the narrative of the hateful internet negatively affects the culture of the internet. People hear and believe that comments are a nasty place. They are certainly a much more nasty place than we tend to interact with in the real world. The result is that fewer and fewer normal, not trolly people interact in those spaces and they get worse and worse. While at the same time we prove over and over again that the internet can actually be a place where lots of really cool and great things happen. But if we all think that the internet is less great than it is, it will become less great because we think that. And my even greater worry is that people will look at the comments of a YouTube video and say, look, a third of these people, at least, are just terrible. They're bad people. And then by extension, those people will assume that a third of all people are terrible and that all social spaces are hostile and antagonistic, which is very not the case. What we're looking at down in the comments is extreme selection bias. People don't want to comment because it seems like a hostile place, so only hostile people comment. Also, on any YouTube video, you've got a lot of people watching it. Just imagine for a moment that 100,000 people gather in a room. It's a stadium, a very large stadium. Now, what are the odds? that there aren't going to be some bad people in that room. Zero. There are. There are going to be bad people in that room. So it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that when 100,000 people watch a video, some of them are going to be racist troll turds, and they're going to leave mean, nasty comments. Now, a big problem here is that YouTube has lately been promoting discussion rather than how many people thumb up a comment. So a comment will end up way at the top of the video because lots of people are discussing that comment. That isn't usually because there's a good discussion happening there. It's usually because that first comment was extremely inflammatory and wrong, and people are arguing about it. And the trolls are loving it. That's an algorithmic problem. I don't know if they know about it, but it seems pretty obvious. It's totally feeding the trolls. Like, the whole point of a troll is to try and get discussion because they want to get a rise out of people, they want that rush, and they want some human interaction, which they don't get in the real world because people don't like them. Let me guarantee you, as a person who has met a number of people, most of them, like 90% of them, are good. They're good people. Not because culture tells them to be good, not because they're afraid of being found out and they're waiting for that moment where they can be anonymously evil, but because they're people just like you and just like me. John, I'll see you on Tuesday.